In the mid-1990s, I developed a pet hate. Useless 4x4. And when Toyota introduced its revolutionary RAV4, I soon discovered that it was the perfect tool. Yeah, the perfect tool to get you into a right mess. Yes, the old RAV4 was a car that gave you just enough confidence in its off-road capabilities to persuade you to do something really stupid and get it well and truly stuck. A vehicle with a low ground clearance, hanging suspension struts, and only one qualification as a 4x4. It had a spare wheel bolted to the tailgate. Nevertheless, 4.5 million of Toyota's recreational active vehicles have been sold in the past 20-ish years, with over 150,000 of them finding homes in Great Britain. What were we thinking? Entering the old RAV4 into an off-road event would have been as effective as dressing a nine-stone weakling in a leotard and signing him up for the Mr. Universe contest. Absolutely pointless. No, the old car was rubbish and I hated it. So when this arrived, I was pretty sure I was going to dislike this one too. generation RAV4 has had a massive makeover and it is no longer that nine stone weakling. It's gone from being a piddly rival for the Suzuki Jimny to being a mini land cruiser. It's now a substantial vehicle with frowning headlamps and a muscular front end. At the rear you'll find rounded haunches and very angular pronounced tail lamps. The new RAV4 is bigger than its predecessor, measuring 8.1 inches longer, 1.2 inches wider, with a 4 inch increase in wheelbase. It sits much lower too, with a new sporty, sleek stance. This all new version of Toyota's baby 4x4 offers more equipment, more space and more performance. It's cheaper than the outgoing car too. In fact, with prices starting at just over £22,500 for the 2.0-litre TD model, it also undercuts entry-level diesel versions of key rivals, including the Honda CR-V and the Mazda CX-5. The cabin is also visibly bigger with bolstered, comfortable seats. This particular car is fitted with the optional leather pack too, which gives you a lovely finish not only to the seats, but also to the dashboard and the door panels. Not only does it look good, but it's padded, so it's good to the touch. The instruments are easy to read with a small onboard computer in the centre of the speedometer, and everything glows a nice blue, cool colour at night. Right. To tell you the honest truth, I am impressed. I didn't think I would be, but I am very impressed. This doesn't feel like a wavy, tipply topply pretend 4x4. This feels substantial. This feels like a real 4x4. This is the 2.2 D4D with the semi automatic six speed gearbox. You can change gear manually by flipping the lever over and then either knocking the gears up and down with the gear stick down here or on the steering wheel with Formula One style paddle shifts. It accelerates reasonably well from low revs and is fairly flexible, but it's not much fun to drive as a manual. The gear changes aren't the smoothest and it tends to hang on to gears for a little while after you've changed. No, nope, best driven as a lazy auto, because at the end of the day, that's what it is. falls down a little is in the refinement department because that engine sounds really gruff when you bury your boot into the boards. Come to think of it, it really doesn't like to be thrashed at all and will run out of steam long before you hit 4000 RPM. 
Which brings me to the other drawbacks. The new large door mirrors create a bit of wind noise at speed. The touchscreen infotainment system is a little hard to read in bright conditions. And finally, despite the stylish new interior, Toyota appears determined not to get rid of the digital clock that's been fitted in every model since the 1980s. You'll either love it or hate it. But that's the worst of it, and this car has many strong selling points. This isn't hugely fun to drive, but it is a sophisticated blend of ride and handling. And that gives it in many ways the edge over some of the more sensible German mates on the market. It's also more engaging than most Japanese models. The McPherson strut front and wishbone rear suspension give good body control, which allows the RAV4 to ride well, even when you're cornering hard. On wet roads, the stability control works well, and if that fails, there's an additional cornering control system that gradually increases the amount of torque going to the rear wheels, so it always feels pretty safe. With clever traction control, four-wheel drive, and Land Rover Freelander-style hill descent control, it copes well with wet tarmac, gravel, grass, reasonable amounts of mud, and a certain amount of flooding. Having a lower centre of gravity also helps when it comes to tackling uneven terrain. And, um, the brakes are pretty good too. Front visibility is great, but as you may expect, rear visibility is hampered thanks to those small rear side windows and thick pillars. Fortunately, the optional onboard parking system does fix the problem nicely, and the door mirrors are large enough to make manoeuvring into tight spaces an absolute doddle. The latest RAV4 is one of the biggest cars in this class, so there is plenty of space in here. Rear seat passengers can spread out with plenty of shoulder room, although life wouldn't be so great for a fifth strapping rugby player due to the fairly narrow middle seat. Nevertheless, rear seat passengers do get more leg room in this car than they would in other class leaders. There are plenty of useful storage areas dotted around the cabin. And the back seats are really easy to fold flat thanks to two simple one-touch levers either side of the seats. Now with these back seats folded flat, the floor is slightly uneven, but you are getting van rivaling load capacity. It's still an SUV that's more suited to dropping the children on a slightly damp rugby field than attempting green laning, but it's got a lot more going for it than its predecessor. So in conclusion, the RAV4 has returned home. It's finally top of its game once more, leading a class that it helped to define in the mid-1990s. It has enviable build quality, it rides particularly well, and despite its limited off-road capabilities and another few obvious downsides, it is a million times better than the old car. And in my book, a much better bet than its closest rivals.